UPS trucks almost never make left-hand turns. Why? So a few years ago, UPS rolled out a new sophisticated route finding system that also tracked information about their vehicles as they drove. Collecting the data and crunching the numbers, it turned out that one of the single biggest drivers of wasted time, more importantly wasted gas in their entire fleet, was making left-hand turns against traffic. So they instituted a new rule in the software to avoid these turns on their routes. Since then, UPS estimates that they've saved well over 10 million gallons of gas and have substantially cut their CO2 emissions, all because of data. Now, UPS is a big company, and like most big companies, they have an interest in leveraging data to solve big problems. State governments, who also tend to have pretty big problems, have taken an interest in this as well. So the states shown here all have legislation compelling their different agencies and departments to make the data that they generate and collect available to the public. Some have gone further and heavily invested in technology to make this process a little bit simpler. But all of these places are now home to thriving contingents of technologically engaged citizens, civic hackers, who work through the data, find trends, and try their best to solve problems. But what about those of us that aren't big states, or, or even big cities? What about rural places, small towns, coastal villages? What about Maine? So Maine is a state overwhelmingly comprised of small towns and coastal villages. And the problems that our small towns and coastal villages face are those of our nation in the 21st century. Changing economies, aging populations, climate change. The nature of these problems means we can no longer rely on assumptions and anecdotes to address this stuff. We have to be more analytical, more data-driven. But how? So I say we take a look to our state motto, Derigo. I direct or I lead. So let's lead. Forget about big states, forget about big cities, forget about big data, forget big. Let's not think big. Let's think small. We're a small state in terms of people, so we can organize quickly and efficiently. You take the average small town in Maine and you can fit the stakeholders in a room a quarter of this size. And the data we need to use to solve our problems is pretty small too. Tax records, police logs, council minutes, stuff that's easy and cheap to gather. In fact, I propose that we build our own open data system right here, right now, on Mount Desert Island. A means to collect, store, and share the small data that our small towns need to thrive. And importantly, if we make it ourselves and don't pay someone else to do it, we can then share it with all the other small towns in Maine building a collaborative platform to share the information that we have, to find out what we know and what we don't about one another, to solve our own problems. Imagine what we could do with a system like that. Now, it's a TED Talk, so you don't actually have to imagine. I'm going to tell you, but that's a pretty good transition line. <laughs> so I sit on several different boards of nonprofits on this island, all dedicated to servicing the year-round community here. That fact, plus being a new dad, I end up thinking about the future and our town a whole heck of a lot. And if you are thinking about the future in any small coastal community in Maine, or New England for that matter, you inevitably think about one thing. How in the world are my kids ever going to afford to live here? So, being an active, engaged citizen, and still young and stupid enough to be shamelessly optimistic, I figured maybe I could help. So I started with what I happen to know pretty well, data. So I made a trip to the municipal offices, had some very good long conversations, and managed to get the data together to give me a pretty good high-level overview of the economic and housing situation in Bar Harbor. Enter the slide, circles with facts. <laughs> so there's numbers, ignore the numbers, I'll just tell you the basic takeaway. 
the median household in Bar Harbor cannot realistically afford to buy the median house in Bar Harbor. A little over half of the properties in this town are actually owned by folks that live in the town. And overall, we've got about two and a half billion dollars of assessed value, at least for tax purposes. These numbers are cool, but I like visuals, so if I can, I like to put things on maps. So here's a map. A couple obvious things stand out. The two large bright red parcels are Acadia National Park, highly treasured and a highly valued asset to our town. The closer you are to the sea, the more highly assessed your property is, etc. But knowledge discovery is a really addictive thing. So once I made one map, I obviously wanted to make some more, and I wanted to see what are the things out there that I could find. I live in one of the most beautiful and iconic tourist towns in a state whose motto is vacation land. So maybe weekly rentals have something to do with property values in my town. Fortunately, in 2006, Bar Harbor passed legislation compelling the owners of weekly rental properties to register as such with the town. Unfortunately, this information existed in one place, photocopies of handwritten notes. <laughs> so I set aside a couple hours, and after some very long, squinty nights, voila, I had another map. I could see where people were renting their homes. I thought this was pretty cool. And I could see if there was a statistical relationship between being a weekly rental and the assessed value of your home. Also pretty cool. But digging in, there were some problems with the data set. There were a whole heck of a lot of homes that looked like they should be rentals, but weren't. Being curious, I asked myself, could I figure out if there was another way to find this information? So I scraped all the weekly rental sites out there, Airbnb, Verbo, HomeAway, for all the listings in Bar Harbor. And I had my answer. There were a lot of people renting their homes and not registering with the town. <laughs> Surprise. Now, New England sensibilities means I'm not going to out these folks right here and right now, but, but think about it. If you were an engaged citizen or a member of the town government, you would have no realistic or systematic way to get this information outside of paying some poor soul to go out there and click line by line through every one of the listings on those websites and hope that they know what the house is. So all told, I probably spent about 60 hours to make the slides that we just looked at in the last 60 seconds, but think about it. None of this data was big. None of it was from the cloud. It all came from spreadsheets, photocopies, and nice and pleasant conversations. But what if we had a system that allowed what took me 60 minutes to be done in 60 seconds? What if it wasn't just Bar Harbor on those maps, but the rest of Mount Desert Island? What if it wasn't just Mount Desert Island, but the rest of Maine on those maps? What if we had a unified way to collect and share the data that our small towns need to address their problems in the 21st century? Why do I have to end a TED Talk on what if? I'm certainly not stupid enough to actually end my TED Talk on what if. <laughs> so think about it. We don't need to rely on the bigger entities around us to help us solve our own small town problems. Perhaps we small towns with our small data, should simply lead. Thank you very much. <laughs>